Hello, welcome to Z. Murray Designs. Let's upcycle my sister-in-law, Carol Jackson's wedding dress into a chic purse. So let's get started. I begin by closely looking at the dress elements. And I know I have to remove the lining from the main dress. I'm going to remove the buttons, the zipper, and the horsehair braids. I also know that I have a petticoat and I'm going to see how I can incorporate that into the purse. So after I remove the lining and separate it from the dress, and I remove the, beat, the buttons, the zipper, and the horsehair braid from the lining, I'll use that later in another project. I'm going to cut up the center back seam, starting where the zipper began, all the way down to the hem. And I'm cutting through the embroidery, through the, through the beading, and the sequins. So I'm going to open up the, the dress and I'm going to lay it flat. And I'm going to then prepare my purse pattern. Mine measures 14 and a half by 14 and a half with a half inch seam allowance and I'll add a magnetic snap and uh, pockets on the interior. So now I'm going to lay the, the fabric, I'm going to lay the dress flat and it's the flattest toward the bottom. And I'll put down my purse pattern and I'll put down my pattern weights and I'm going to trace around with my marking tool and I'm going to cut my pattern out with uh, scissors And I'll cut my first pattern panel and I'll cut another one. So I need two all total, for the, one for the front and one for the back. I'm also going to cut out two, of, two pieces of fusible interfacing and I will follow the manufacturer's instructions and I will press those on to each of those, of those panels. So next I want to create some flower embellishments from the fabric, from the dress and from the dress lining and I'll use some additional fabrics that I have in my stash. I'll cut a strip that is two inches wide by 24 inches long and I'll use some buttons for the, for the flower centers. I start by folding in the short end of the strip and then I will pin that in place and I will continue to fold that strip with wrong sides facing all the way up the length of the strip. When I get to the other short end, I fold that one in and I pin it in place. And with a double strand of thread that's about four inches longer than the length of my strip, I'm going to knot it and I'm going to start at one end of the short edge of the folded edge. Take a few stitches. And then I'm going to create a running stitch all the way down the raw edge of this strip. And I'm going to use this running stitch to gather my fabric. So once you get to the other end of the strip, don't knot your end yet. Just continue now by pulling on that thread to gather the fabric. And as you continue pulling, just move your gathers down to the, to the folded end. And as you continue to gather, the fabric is going to want to spiral in on itself. And that's what you are looking to create. So continue to gather those, make the gathers, and letting the fabric spiral in on itself until you form the flower. And then with the remaining piece of thread come in from the back and you want to catch all the ends of your fabric. And once you've cut all the ends of your fabric, just knot it on the back. And then you will use a bead, a button, any type of embellishment that you want for the flower center. I'm going to use a button and I'm just kind of introducing various buttons that I want to use. I think I'm going to go with the larger white button and I'm going to attach that.
And then I will add some additional fabrics in my stash to create larger flowers. So now on the front of the purse panel, I want to use some other embellishments and I'm going to use my sister-in-law's upcycle jewelry pieces. I have some earrings that I've taken off the backs and I have a necklace charm that I'm going to use. And when I take off these backs on these earrings, I'm just going to sand down any rough edges that I have. I also have some other necklace pieces. You see the pearls there that I'm going to use and other necklaces. And those pieces that I can't hand sew in, I'm just going to use my E6000 glue to attach those. So I use other pieces of embellishments. I have some Rick Rack and then I have some yarn dory. And I also have some yarn, braided yarn pieces there. And I just put those on in the places that I want them. Hand sew everything on. So once I have everything all hand sewn on and glued on, I realized that it still needed a little extra bling. So I found some flat jeweled pieces that I had in my stash that I'm going to add. I also added some charms using some jump rings to a piece of an upcycled necklace piece that I had. So I'm going to place my jewel pieces in the pattern of, that I like. And once the, I like the pattern layout, then I will glue these on with E6000. And anything that you've glued on with the E6000, just let your panel just sit overnight flat until your E6000 glue is completely dry. Now that my E6000 glue pieces are all dry, I'm going to add my back panel to the front panel. And I'm going to make sure that all of my embellishments are out of the seam allowance and with right sides facing. I'm going to pin down the side seam, the bottom seam, and the other side seam. Back stitching at the beginning and the end. And I use quite a few pins because I don't want anything shifting on me. And I'm sewing with a half inch seam allowance. So once the front part of my bag is all sewn together, I'm going to box the corners by cutting out a two inch square that measures two inches by two inches. That'll make it easier for me to box those corners. So next I'm going to press those seams open. And to box the corners, I'm going to make sure that my bottom seam meets up with my side seam. And then I'm going to pin it in place. And I make sure to, to pin down those seam allowances so that they don't shift on me as I go to the sewing machine. And I'm going to sew a half inch seam allowance on both sides. And once I've sewn my half inch seam allowance to box my corners, I'll come back and I will trim, uh, trim it off to a quarter of an inch. And then I turn my bag right side out. So next let's move on to making the lining of the purse. And to do that, I'm going to use the lining of the dress. And again, I'm going to cut up the back seam. And I will lay the fabric out flat. And then I'm going to cut two panels using my purse pattern, same purse pattern again. 
and I cut out two of my purse patterns from the lining. This time I dyed that lining. I dyed it using my Derwent Ink Tense blocks and I'll leave a link in the description on how I use those blocks to dye fabric. And then I cut my two panels of fusible and I fused those to my lining fabric. And then I cut out my two inch squares for my box corners. You see I have those cut. So next I need to find the center of my lining fabric and I'm going to mark that. I'm going to measure down one and a half inches. That's for my magnetic snap. I'll measure down three inches. That'll be for my pocket. I'll do that on both of those lining fabrics. To insert your magnetic snap, it comes in a set of four and I will take one of the washers and there's two slits on each side. I put the center right on the center mark and I mark those two slits on each side. And then I'm going to make two snips in this lining fabric. And I'll leave a link in the description for a closer look at how to insert this magnetic snap. And then you're going to take one piece of your magnetic snap. You'll insert it from the right side of the fabric so that the prongs come through the back. I also have made those slits on this upcycled piece of batting that I'm using. You can use any type of interfacing. And I make the slits. I put that over the prong. And then I take my washer and I put that over the prong. And then press those prongs one to one side, one to the other. And you'll do that for both panels. Now we'll create the pockets. So I cut four pieces from my lining fabric, six and a half inches by seven and a half inches. And I also cut two piece, four pieces of my interfacing, my fusible interfacing. I fuse that to each of my pocket pieces. I'm going to place my pocket pieces right sides facing and then I will pin it in place and I'm going to sew half inch seam allowance and I'm going to leave about a two to three inch opening and then I will trim my seam allowance and snip my corners. I'm finger pressing that opening that I left, I'm finger pressing it closed to press the seam allowance. And then I turn my pocket right side out through that opening. I use a turning tool to make sure to push out those corners. And then I'm going to press and top stitch at the top. Then I'm going to find the center of my pocket and I'm going to put a mark there. On my lining part of the fabric, I'm going to put a pin where I put my three inch mark. And on the right side of the fabric, I'm going to place my pocket so that that center crease matches the center crease on the lining at that three inch mark. And then I pin that in place. And then I sew about a scant eighth of an inch all the way around, making sure to back stitch several times at the beginning and the end, and then you will catch that opening. You will catch it closed when you attach your pockets. And do that for both sides of the lining. Now that your pockets have been attached and your magnetic snap has been attached, you're going to put right sides facing on your lining of the purse and you will pin both side seams. And you'll pin the bottom, but on the bottom, you're going to leave about a four to five inch opening. That's where I'm marking. And you won't sew that part. You'll sew from your marking to the end on both sides. And sew both side seams and using a half inch seam allowance. And then next, you're going to press your seams open. And 
and then you'll box the corners the same way you did on the main part of the bag and do both corners and once you sew that half inch seam allowance on the box corners you'll trim it to a quarter inch just like you did on the main part of the bag Now you'll leave your lining part of the bag, leave it wrong side out and set it aside while we make our handles. For my handles, I'm going to again use the lining part of the fabric. I'm going to cut my fusible first. I cut my fusible 5 inches by 24 inches long and I fused it to my lining and then I cut out the lining part of the handle. And then I fold it in half and I press it. Then I fold each of those raw edges toward that crease, that center crease and press. And then I fold it in half again and I press it. I do that for both handles. And then I top stitch down both sides of the handle. Now my handles are complete. I've top stitched on both sides. I'm ready to attach it to the main part of my bag. And to attach my handles, I find the center of my bag and I measure three inches out from the center and I place my handles on each of those marks, those three inch marks. And I just center it on that mark and I pin it in place. I put one handle on the front and I put one handle on the back using the same technique. And I'm just going to base these handles in place. Now that my handles have been attached, it's time to sew the bag together. So my main body of my bag, I'm going to have it right side out. I'm going to fold my handles down and I'm going to place it inside the lining of my bag. My, my lining is wrong side out. Now I'll place the main body of the bag inside the lining. So right sides are facing inside. I match up my side seams, pinning down those seam allowances because I don't want them to shift. Then I pin at the center. Then I pin at my handles. And then I just continue pinning as needed. And then I sew a half inch seam allowance all the way around. And I start at the side seam, back stitching at the beginning and back stitching again at the end. Now that our bag is sewn together, I'm going to trim off any of my embellishments that are still, that are out at the, above the seam allowance. And then through my opening in the lining, I'm going to pull the bag right side out. And just take your time doing this. You have lots of embellishments on there. I'm going to finish doing mine off camera. So once your bag has been turned right side out, I just double check to make sure that my handles are attached. To make sure that all my embellishments are still attached. Then I sew my opening closed. Then I'm going to push the lining of the bag inside the main body of the purse and I'm going to press that lining inside so that the lining doesn't show on the outside of the bag. I pin my handles down because I'm going to take it to my machine and I'm going to sew, I'm going to top stitch. I'll top stitch with a straight stitch first and then I'll come back and use a decorative stitch. I also, I'm just, I, I pin down my embellishments 
so they don't get caught in the top stitch. And once you've top stitched, you're all done with your wedding dress up cycle into this nice chic purse. A great keepsake. I was able to get four bags out of my wedding dress. I also added these jewelry pieces that belong to my sister-in-law as well. And each of my four bags, one will go to my sister-in-law's sister, one will go to each of her best friends. I also have some pieces that are left that I'm going to applique and I'm going to try to get a fifth purse out of this. So I hope you like this project and I hope you'll give it a try. Thanks for watching.